I'm in, I'm in full blast today. This is fresh batteries. <laughs> okay, I am waiting for a few more people to come in, trickling in, and I do apologize for the tardiness of this meeting getting started. As many of you have showed up on time, thank you so much. But please bear with us as we um, wait for a few more members to come in. Maybe some people are out voting. I hope you all had an opportunity to do so, if it was your election day. Okay, we're going to start our public session of tonight's meeting. Again, I thank you all for coming out and for sitting so patiently. All right, so this is an opportunity for people who wish to speak on any to topic before the community board, before your neighbors and people in the community. If you fill out one of these sheets in the back of the room, really quickly because we cut it, the time has already been cut for this but I'll give you two seconds to run up if you want, if you have something that you really want to speak on. Um, but before me, I have some voter sheets, and what we try to do is, if it's more than four people speaking on the same subject, I limit it down to four people on that particular subject, okay? So that you don't feel like you've been slated in any kind of way, all right? Okay, we're gonna get started. The first person to speak is uh, David Rivera from Thrive. David? I know. Yeah, two minutes. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is David. I'm here from Thrive NYC. You can say oh. your age and Thank you. Uh, Thrive is an initiative connected to the mayor's office as well as the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Um, is anyone here familiar with Thrive? Great, great, good to see that. Thrive NYC? Yes. Okay, Thrive is a initiative connected to mental health and wellness. Um, across the city right now, we are doing mental health first aid trainings, which is a free public course open to anybody living in the New York City area. Um, we are doing public courses in many of our libraries throughout all the boroughs. Mental health first aid is a full day training where it teaches folks sort of an action plan on how to address mental illness, mental health. If you're either working professionally with somebody who is suffering from mental illness, or if it is a family member you're concerned, you wanna learn a little more about how to access resources, how to identify certain signs, you can learn a great deal in this course. We are also connecting many city agencies, many companies around the city, community organizations, um, to the training as well in a private capacity where we could come out to your organization and we could present a free full day staff sort of like a professional development opportunity and both of these opportunities are completely free it's a great opportunity right now going on um, all of our trainers come from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and have a really extensive background in mental health and Please, we invite you to learn more. Um, I'm happy to speak to anybody individually if you'd like to know some more. Uh, I have some uh, pamphlets outside with some more information if you want to check out the website. And if anybody wants a card or anything, please come up to me individually. Uh, do I have like a second if anybody has a question? Any questions real quickly? No? Okay, great. Um, I also wanted to mention I am personally working with the Department of Education to train many teachers. Um, we're, we're teaching teachers how to be a little more comfortable and a little more understanding of mental health with the young people they are working with and not to feel un afraid or uncomfortable to approach some of these topics and how to connect that young person to the appropriate resources, especially as we know across the country and in the city, we're seeing unfortunately a lot of tragedies and a lot of 
unfortunate events surrounding mental health. So what we really are trying to do is make it a more understanding and a more understanding climate for people to approach these topics, all right? Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Hi, my name is Luis Lopez. I am a member of CB3, but I'm also a member of the Haven Plaza Tennis Association. Just to piggyback what David has said, I've taken the course myself at Tompkins Square Library, and what we're doing in conversation with David, we're, we're bringing this over to my neighborhood. We are actually at a grassroots level. On the 21st of July, we're hosting a seminar at our tennis association. We've invited also our neighboring Village East Towers. In addition to that, several of the NYCHA tennis groups, Campos, Jacob Rees, uh, Lillian Wards, and Baruch, they're all gonna be joining us on the 21st of July at Haven Plaza Tennis Association, the community room. It's a seven hour workshop. And I have some flyers here if anybody's interested. We still have some seats available. We're getting overwhelming response as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Hamilton Clancy. Yeah, hi, my name's Hamilton Clancy. I'm uh, with the drilling company, uh, Shakespeare in the parking lot. And uh, we've been uh, down here on the lower side, Lower East Side for uh, 23 years now, going on 24. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we've encountered uh, a little hike in the parking race. Uh, they've gone up 400 percent. I said 400 percent is great at the Clemente, and uh, so we've been uh, we've been forced to to look into other areas here on the Lower East Side. We feel like uh, Shakespeare in the parking lot is part of the cultural arts legacy that, that connects uh, the fantastic innovation of the Lower East Side of yesterday with today. And we've been very proud to continue it. We served over 100,000 people, interesting people to Shakespeare of all kinds. Uh, we unfortunately, when we reached out to the Parks Department, uh, we were told that uh, we couldn't be at our Roosevelt Park more than a more one evening because we were new. We said, well, we've been here for 23 years. And they said, well, but we're new to us. And we reached out to one of the other parking lots uh, here in the neighborhood. And they said, well, no, no, we, we, we don't want anybody in our parking lot. So we came here to the community board in the hope that we could mention that our activity uh, our, is still ready to thrive on the Lower East Side. We still think it's important to be here. We still think it's one of the most welcoming places for people of all socioeconomic levels to experience Shakespeare and a little bit of joy. And we're hopeful that uh, some people here in the meeting uh, might be able to give us some ideas of how we might be able to work things out uh, with the Parks Department. Uh, lastly, I'll, I'll mention that when we called Parks, they said to us, they said, uh, you, uh, you need to be in a performance space. We said, we're we're Shakespeare in the parking lot. Thank you all very much. I'm sorry, I have a request. Does anyone in the room have a computer that takes a flash drive that we can, that we can, that we can use to take minutes? Thank you. Okay, next we have Ann Mitchell-Tree. I'm sorry? Public session is in the mic. Please limit your comments or whatever you have to say to two minutes, please. Thank you. Hello, okay, I, I'm not sure why I'm speaking. I thought they withdrew for tonight. Ms. Stetzer, did they I tap us? Yeah, it's number 15. They're here? I'm speaking on it. All right, here we go. Let me just say this and we'll move on. 
East 5th Street in Manhattan, if you don't know, is a prized, prime, and precious location. It is home to many special populations, including the Grace Church High School on Cooper Square, the JASA Senior Residence on the West Side Corner, the Krauss Residence for Cognitively Impaired Adults, as well as the 9th Precinct Station House and the Schoolyard for Manhattan School for Career Development. As parents and conscientious citizens, the East 5th Street Block Association has been showing up for the past 35 years to keep our block as safe and quiet as this government will allow. Yet we were unable to prevent a deadly shooting and an incident of vehicular manslaughter on 2nd Avenue. Both of those killings were related to drunken, intoxicated behavior. I would hope that the only business, only a business with a good history of honesty and accountability would be able to operate in this two-story corner space with a crowd capacity of 150 people on East 5th Street. The current applicant has been caught and has admitted to breaches of the stipulations in his prior location. And you know what those problems were. 20 seconds. It's unfair for us to go through all the effort to negotiate with a block association for the sake of noise reduction, then have the stipulations ignored, and then reward that operator with a full liquor license in a two-story corner venue on East 5th Street. So uh, we are asking that Time. You, you vet this owner very carefully and that we um, demand that they f abide by their stipulations. Thank you. Laura Swivel, Swivel? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Sue, okay. So I would just like to say a few words on the Landmarks Committee um, item on 119 to 121 Second Avenue. Given the tragic history of this site, where two people were killed and 19 injured in an explosion resulting from an illegal gas connection, it feels unseemly for CB3 to support any development that is not 100% affordable housing with priority given to the residents who were displaced. That the landlord has profited from the sale of buildings that were destroyed as a result of greed and indifference to human life sets a terrible precedent. The nature of the proposed project adds insult to grievous injury. The Landmarks Committee's comments address the jarring design aspects of the proposed mixed use in the clause demanding an acknowledgement of the history of the site is admirable. But it is difficult for those of us who lived through the explosion and its long-lasting after effects to accept that this is the best we can do. We would support a memorial in a public park on the site or affordable housing facilities named for the young men who lost their lives. Anything short of that is a travesty of justice. The Landmarks Preservation Commission's hearing on this matter is tentatively scheduled for July 10. We encourage you to attend to ensure this tragedy is indeed memorialized on the site and will be in touch with updates. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to the heart of this matter. Michael Pasco. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Pasco. I'm a resident of the East Village and I spoke on the same topic last month uh, to inform uh, community members about opportunities in the tech industry in New York, uh, of which I'm a part. Um, I'm a designer in the, in the tech world. And uh, as the tech industry now is the second largest in the world here in New York, uh, employing over 120,000 workers, which is 60% growth over the last decade. Uh, I really want to make sure that this community has visibility and access into those opportunities. So I've printed off a list of events um, over the coming month, and there's flyers out front at the desk. Uh, these opportunities include uh, one such as Men Who Lead Panel, uh, Men at the Forefront of Black Entrepreneurship, uh, Top Tech Talent Job Fair, one for freelancers, one for women and girls who want to get into coding. And my contact information is at the bottom of this flyer. If you're curious to learn more about tech, a resource. Thank you. 
Thank you. Harry Bibbins. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm Harry Bubbins from Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation, and I will just uh, follow up on uh, Laura's remarks. Our executive director was at the Landmarks Committee uh, meeting as well, and we uh, do support the aspect in the resolution before you that there should be some kind of recognition of the tragic events that occurred there, and uh, you know that could be up to the family and uh, developer working together. So I wanted to mention that. On to uh, better news. We're very encouraged by the Economic Development Committee's consideration of item number two, the uh, retail crisis, which is very apparent. And uh, our understanding from that meeting is that the East Village Special District that's been, uh, is also going to be, I understand, in the uh, needs assessment statement we're very excited about, and that there's gonna be some progress in autumn. Um, you know, it, looking at the minutes of the community board, it's been on the agenda since Dominic was the chair. And so we're real excited that all the work that Dominic and other people fellows at the community board, it sounds like it's going to come to fruition uh, this year with our council member support. We understand that there's a lot of uh, other rezonings going on from Two Bridges uh, EIS and the Tech Hub, so we understand the time frame, but we're excited about the autumn time frame. And also glad to see uh, the Small Business Job Survival Act on the agenda, item number four of the Economic Development Committee. Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation supports our council members, Carlina Rivera and Margaret Chin, who are both co-sponsors of the bill. And we understand that Speaker Corey Johnson is going to bring it to a hearing this autumn. And we encourage everyone in the community board, uh, whether we agree 100% or not, there's been a lot of good points made. So I encourage community board members with expertise to speak at the city council hearing. We're excited to come. And finally, the Land Use Committee, uh, uh, considering the M1 uh, uh, hotel amendment, did correctly note that CB3 is inundated with hotels, like the Moxie Hotel going up on East 11th Street. So it's great to see the Land Use Committee as well continuing their good work. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I apologize for mispronouncing your last oh, name. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. <clears throat> Wendy Lee. How are you, everyone? Great. My name is Wendy Lee. I recently moved into an office space of the Nancy. I'm very excited to be part of the community, and I want to introduce myself to every one of you, and I want to talk about immigration issues today. As you know, we have seen lots of horrible immigration stories lately. And uh, for the past 15 years, we have 300,000 new immigrants in New York City, in addition to some other non-citizen immigrants making valuable contributions to our community. There's a study that 20% uh, of the judges and the bench, they are minorities. However, 70% of the defendants who go to the court the minorities. So I want to make sure that um, we will have the commitment that our courtroom is a safe place and also that um, everybody will have the fair treatment no matter what, whether they are immigrant or non-immigrant. Um, myself, I'm an immigrant. Uh, I came to the United States about 20 years ago and um, I'm so excited to, um, to be part of the community and I also look into our community for inspirations every day. I'm so very proud and could not be prouder to be part of this community or be a fabric of this community and uh, the city and above all, the country. Thank you very much. Thank you. David Malkins. Hi, I'm with the East 5th Street Block Association. Um, our community thanks Community Board 3's SLA committee for its unanimous vote to deny a full liquor license to Nia Tapas at 85 Second Avenue. 
because there is a church across the street, a full liquor license could only be possible if the public entrance were moved to 58 feet into our quiet residential block of East 5th Street. Because 85 Second Avenue is a two-story venue with a large crowd capacity, and because our block remembers the noise, sleepless nights, and sidewalk congestion when it was a notorious, tragic club that used to be on Fifth Street and used that Fifth Street entrance, uh, we feel that a full liquor license with a Fifth Street entrance would have a negative impact on our quality of life. That said, most of us would welcome Nate Tapas. Great food. They're on First Avenue right now. Um, and we'll ins we would welcome them if it retains the Second Avenue entrance and instead will use a beer and wine license, which is what it has. Uh, had in its present successful location on First Avenue. Um, and I'm here tonight because I want to ask that a petition from residents of East 5th and 2nd Avenue, the immediate area, uh, there's 148 residents and people that uh, are from this, this block. Uh, I want it put into the record of the SLA uh, uh, material on this item. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we're going to move. Oh, sorry. Okay, that was our last uh, public speaker. We're going to move into our. Sorry, I'm going crazy. Um, we're going to move into our elected officials report. Uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio. Public Advocate Letitia James's office, Comptroller Scott Stringer. <coughs> if you hear me call your office, just come on down. Borough President Gail Brewer, Council um, Congress Member Nidia Velasquez, Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Afraz Khan. I'm from the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Uh, just a few quick updates. So as many of you know, the Borough President uh, joined other elected officials, as well as community members, on Rutgers Street to protest the city's release of the Two Bridges Draft Environmental Impact Statement. This is regarding the three major developments in the Two Bridges area. And so the City Planning Commission has agreed to postpone the public hearing on the environmental review of the Two Bridges developments. Um, giving, of course, the local community board here more time to comment and provide input. Uh, in the interim, the BP is committed to remaining uh, forceful in our efforts along with the council member to require the developments to obtain a special permit by going through a ULA process to ensure that there's more of a community input, more um, uh, basically thoughts and comments provided in the process. And in the larger sort of uh, grander scheme of things, the BP believes in a more permanent solution that would ensure the Two Bridges waterfront area is protected from oversized developments. And so we're ensuring that we can remain invested in that process. Uh, in regards to the L train shutdown, uh, some of you may have heard uh, one change has been made clear. The DOT MTA has committed to installing an ADA uh, accessible elevator on 14th Street and 6th Avenue. In the larger scheme of things, there's obviously various other issues in regards to the mitigation plans. Uh, and our office is still working and has an inner community board task force that recently met again this past week. Uh, and the BP will also be present at tomorrow's city council oversight hearing to discuss the L train closure. Uh, community board funding has increased uh, marginally, but it has increased. So $2.5 million was allocated to community boards for the fiscal year 19. It comes to about $43,000 per year uh, to each community board citywide. And so the BP's office is working with community boards to kind of see how that money can be allocated and whether the boards want to put that money together to come up with an event of some sort. Um, but that funding has been provided. Uh, but we're looking to you know, explore further ideas and see what community boards would like to do. Uh, in terms of the federal level, as many of you know, the Supreme Court uh, had upheld the president's travel called it the Muslim ban that's essentially targeting majority Muslim countries. Uh, and the BP is actually currently at the rally at Foley Square. It's also, of course, another issue that our office close, pays close attention to, uh, and we're trying to make sure that that issue is not um, taken lightly. Uh, lastly, just an upcoming event on June 28th, we have a homeowner stability event for the LGBTQ community. 
providing support for LGBTQ seniors and folks living with disabilities. Um, so feel free to check that out. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Have any community boards um, expressed a desire to spend the money on an event? Uh, it, it was just an idea being being thrown around. It, it wasn't any sort of commitment not or anything. By, not by the community. Uh, I'd have to check back. I don't know specifically which community boards brought that up. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, speaking on behalf of Congressman Velasquez. Uh, last week, the Congresswoman and 15 other members of Congress went to San Diego to investigate the horrible detention centers for migrant children. She was really horrified by the conditions, and while she's relieved to see that, he re that Donald Trump uh, reverse his policy. She continues to be disturbed that families may be detained together or departed with, deported without due process and that many children are still separated from their families, some of them in New York. Uh, last week, she also arranged a meeting with Chancellor Carranza to uh, learn more about the city's plans for specialized high schools. Um, while this issue is not resolved, she urged him to be more inclusive of all communities moving forward so they are not shut out from the dialogue. Her new bill, um, she also just introduced a new bill, the Guarantee Access to Arts and Music uh, Education Act, which would expand Title I funds to help underserved elementary and secondary schools in education. Um, some of you may also have been getting some strange calls in Mandarin. Um, recently, there's been a scam targeting immigrants and Chinese Americans claiming to be the Chinese consulate. Um, New York City residents have lost over uh, an estimated $3 million. Um, Congressman Velasquez wrote to the FTC to address and investigate the scam, protect victims, and conduct more proactive outreach to the Chinese community. And if you've been a victim of the scam yourself, please let our office know or report it to the FTC. And finally, um, she also, uh, the House also recently passed an amendment to expand opportunities to employees so that they can own stake in the companies they work for. So it's called ESOP, E-S-O-P. A companion bill has also been introduced in the Senate by uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions from board members? I have a question. Yeah. So do you have anything written in the uh, Chinese language for people to know about this scam that's going on? I have a very large population of yeah, Asian of Americans. So um, if you get our June update, which is up front, um, it has a summary about the issue in both English and Chinese. And if you go onto our website, there, um, the letter that she wrote is provided in both English and Chinese. And actually, um, as a um, part of the response to our, the letter, um, the FTC, so one of the issues was that the FTC had translated the document, the warning to Chinese, but not the link to it for some reason. So you could, if you couldn't read, uh, if you couldn't read English, you didn't know where the translation was, and they fixed that in response to our letter immediately. Thank so. you. Thank you. Oh, um, any other questions? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Congress member Carolyn Malone. Okay, Yulaine New. Deborah Glick. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Becca. I'm the communications director for Assembly Member Yuli New. Um, just a couple of quick updates. We have finally, finally moved to our new office. So we're now at 64 Fulton Street. So that's on Fulton and Gold. Just a couple blocks from where we used to be. Our phone number is still the same, so you can still call us there. We are planning to host a community open house um, a little bit later this summer. So keep an eye out for any emails about that. Um, Yulene just got back from Albany at the end of last week, and um, she's been fighting alongside her colleagues to push back against any attempts for the federal government to separate families here and at the border. Before Trump signed the executive order modifying the zero tolerance policy, Yulene was very vocal about putting an end to this practice of family separation. In light of today's Supreme Court decision, Yulene will continue to speak out against any and all discriminatory and hateful policies. Last week, Yulene spearheaded a letter to the Extel developers, pressing them to honor their commitment to build a large-scale affordable supermarket to replace the shuttered Pathmark. Yulene will continue to push Extel for answers in the coming weeks and months. We haven't gotten a response yet, and as soon as we do, we'll let CB3 know. And finally, Yulene attended a press conference and rally yesterday hosted by Borough President Brewer and Councilmember Chin to urge the city to extend the time the community and community board has to review the draft environmental impact statement. Um, like um, the previous speakers have mentioned. 
yep, yep, they moved it, it's all good. And uh, she'll continue to work with people to make sure that the uh, community can remain engaged. Yeah. Questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Charlie? Hey. Hi, good evening, everyone. Charlie Anderson from Assemblymember Deborah Glick's office. Uh, just very quickly tonight, uh, just like uh, my colleague from Assemblymember News Office said yes last week, uh, session did end on Wednesday. Um, unfortunately, uh, at least for the Assembly, the Senate was unable to take up and continue the extender for school speed safety cameras. Uh, that program, which needed an extender in legislation to be able to continue, uh, ends on July 25th. And technically, as the law stands now, those safety cameras in school zones, uh, which catch speeders, uh, will be uh, deactivated on that day. Uh, so it is our understanding, uh, however, that the Senate does not need to be called into a special by the governor to be able to take that up. They can continue to vote. And so we hope that that will happen. Uh, but as of now, uh, uh, we, are, we are disappointed uh, in that, to say the least. Uh, uh, in the same vein, uh, we will be having a much longer uh, session update uh, for you in our July board report. Uh, we kind of are drafting a two part that will come at the end of this week. We'll have something long uh, for you to be able to read. Uh, and then we will, I'll be able to come back in July and kind of give you a bigger update about various things that did happen. Uh, and finally, if you pick up our board report in the back, uh, our office, the assembly member, much like everybody else who has spoken here tonight, is uh, horrified by the family separation policy that has been going on on the federal level. Um, I was at a meeting last week in which there was some confusion as to whether or not uh, staffers or our offices can encourage you to uh, 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 give or how or or. It is the assembly ethic policy that we are not ethically prohibited. Uh, so if you receive our updates, we sent out an e-blast last week. If you scroll to the bottom, there's a link to a Slate article that gives you a list of wonderful nonprofits that are working in, in this field that are able to actually be helpful. Um, places for you to donate money, donate your time, and do what have you. If anyone needs that, you can see me in the back. I'll be here for a little while and give you my card, and I can forward you that email or vice versa. Uh, unless there are any questions, that's it for me this evening. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. <clears throat> I just want to um, let people know if you've come in since I made the There's a table out in the lobby where there are two people from the city's Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. They're testing out um, a new potential community board website. Uh, it's actually a project that's in partnership with the borough president and, um, and Beta NYC. And so if you have 10 minutes, um, you can, there's a sign-up sheet, and you can go and sign up, and then um, they'll walk through a script with you and, and see how you're using the site. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Okay, Harvey Epstein, I'm, I know they're not here. Yeah, yep, they oh, are they? Oh, replacing. you're replacing someone. Okay. Hi, my name is Auda Olivaria. I'm here from Assemblymember Harvey Epstein's office. Um, Aura, A U R A. Um, this month, well, in this session, the assembly member has passed a number of bills related to housing. Um, he also introduced legislation um, related to authorized absences for healthcare professionals fighting the e Ebola um, crisis overseas. Um, yesterday, we presented two checks to PS15 and PS34 for $25,000 each um, for their school, so we're really, really honored to do that yesterday. Um, he also hand-delivered a letter to the Rent Guidelines Board advocating um, for a rent freeze, and he's there today, so that's why he couldn't be here. Um, we have also been attending the L-Train meetings um, for the MTA, and we are really, really hoping that um, we have timely bus schedules and pedestrian safety. We're also going to have two um, one-way uh, bike lanes on East 13 and East 12th Street. Um, and Harvey also joined his colleagues in Albany during the last week of session to demand an end to the inhumane separation of families. Um, we also have some events going on. I left the reports up in the front, but I can bring them down here for you guys. So thank you. 
Uh, that the outside is for the members of the public and here is for board members. So you can split it up if you okay. want. Okay, thank you. Next we have Senator, uh, Sen Senate, sorry, Senator Brian Cavanaugh, Senator Brad Holman, Hi, I'm Caroline from State Senator Brad Hoylman's office. Um, as many folks before me mentioned, it was the end of the legislative session last week. Um, unfortunately, as uh, Charlie mentioned, uh, the, sale, the Senate failed to address a host of critical issues this year, such as ethics reform, gun safety, protecting children of undocumented immigrants, and criminal justice reform, and women's reproductive health. They even let the law that permits speed safety cameras at schools, legislation that passed in the assembly under the leadership of Deborah Glick. Um, second, we are hosting a senior resource fair next month on July 10th. It will be from 2 to 5 p.m. There are these lovely flyers in the front of the room, um, rather in the back of the room. Um, we would love for everyone to pick one up and join us. Um, just one note, there is um, a statement on the flyer that says free shingles vaccines. There is a national shortage of shingles vaccines, so they will no longer be free. I'm really sorry about that. But, um, but other than that, the flyer is completely accurate. Um, and uh, another thing that happened during the legislative session um, is there was legislation that passed the Senate that requires at least one member of the SLA to be a New York City resident. The bad news is it didn't pass the assembly. Um, but the good news is that uh, someone from New York City was appointed. So um, that worked out. Um, we also testified before the Rent Guidelines Board this month. Um, and uh, we basically uh, advocated for a rent freeze because there was a, uh, which has been, happened for the last couple of years, there's been a proposed increase this year, which we oppose. Um, and that's it. So any questions? All right, awesome. Thank you. Okay, Veen, oh, okay, good. Okay, so now we have Senator Brian Kavanaugh. Thank you. I literally just answered my phone as I stepped through the threshold. So, uh, quick, quick change here. So, uh, you know, thank you. Uh, very often when you're here uh, at your community board meetings, I am in Albany. So, uh, it's a great treat to be back with you. The, the uh, legislature adjourned last Wednesday, um, unfortunately, without resolving a few major things, which I'll discuss with you in a minute. Um, but uh, we did have some. Uh, we had some accomplishments this year. Um, I think we got, a, we got a budget this year, a little earlier in the session, that provided for a lot of our uh, important uh, priorities in this community, including uh, a lot of funding for public housing. You know, there's been a change in leadership there, and we're continuing to push for uh, adequate funding and, and adequate oversight. Oh, and we have a lot of particular uh, developments where we're working on, on issues there. Um, we had uh, a, a big push. Uh, this year for the extension of speed cameras. Um, all of, a lot of our schools have these cameras that uh, catch speeders. They have been very clearly demonstrated to reduce speeding around schools, reduce accidents. Um, they are unfortunately expiring this week uh, and notwithstanding a tremendous push by Deborah Glick, who sponsors the bill in the assembly and by basically all of us on the Democratic side in the Senate, uh, the Republicans have yet to extend that. That means the cameras will be shut off this week. Um, one of the senators, one of the Republican senators, the day after the session expired, uh, announced that it was a big priority to get those extended. Uh, not sure what that means, but it, what it may mean is that we'll be back in session at some point before the summer's out, which I actually, notwithstanding that not being great for my schedule, I did do. So I, I think we'll resolve that. Um, there is, they are in effect at schools where there's summer school, and so it does increase people's, uh, the, the, sa the safety concerns around those schools, and obviously in September it'll be even bigger concern. Um, one of the things that got caught up in that thing, in that uh, dispute, was uh, one, we're working on the L train on a variety of fronts on the plans for that. Still a lot of work to do, and I know a lot of people in this room have been involved in that. 
Um, you know, as, as I'm sure you know, when the, the tunnel will shut down for 15 months beginning next April, uh, there, that will mean a lot of new activity over the Williamsburg Bridge and also probably the Manhattan Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge as well. But the Williamsburg Bridge is the big bridge where we're planning, where they're planning dedicated lanes for buses and for HOV3, three occupants in a vehicle. Um, the only thing they need legislative authority for is the enforcement of those HOV lanes. So Joe Lentil from the Brooklyn side and I from the Manhattan and Brooklyn side uh, proposed a bill that would provide that authorization. Again, that is something the assembly passed and my colleagues in the Senate assured me uh, they were willing to do provided we resolved the issue of the speed cameras because they're both camera enforcement issues. Only in Albany would those two things have to happen at the same time. Uh, but that, that's still also pending. Um, it is something we theoretically could do in the latter part of this year, or maybe even as late as to do that, so that they could plan around that. Um, so we're still working on that as well. Um, we did pass a bill requiring one member of the SLA to be a New York a city resident, and in fact confirmed a member of the SLA to, who is a New York City resident. I will point out that Brad Hoyleman was the Senate sponsor. I was a co-sponsor. He was the Senate sponsor of the bill. But it's a I think it's a terrific step. And I know this is a board that, in particular, has worked very hard to make the SLA more responsive to our local uh, community needs, especially in its current uh, management. I'm trying to say this uh, diplomatically. Uh, but it's an it's an ongoing project that we will continue to push. But it is a it is a good step. And I think the person who has been appointed as a New York City member is a good is a good person who. Uh, knows her way around this community in particular. Um, I think uh, a lot of other stuff, we, you know, we pushed very hard for some major gun violence prevention legislation. Again, we, I, it was my, I have one major bill that would have permitted uh, people to go to courts when somebody is likely to harm themselves or others and temporarily suspend their access to guns with all kinds of due process protections. I think I've talked about it in this room before. We got it through the assembly. We got it as far as a vote in the Judiciary Committee where eight of the 11 Republicans, when forced to vote, voted to move it forward. But notwithstanding that, it's still pending and the uh, Senate Republicans declined to put it on the floor for a vote. Um, so it's a tough session. Uh, we do have elections coming around. This is a nonpartisan space, but I, I think it's fair to say that uh, from the legislature this year may have an opportunity different people in November, as they always do in an election year, uh, but we're going to continue to fight uh, for these things. Uh, locally, I mentioned we're working a lot on trying to make sure the L train shutdown plans make some sense and are uh, thoroughly vetted in advance. We've pushed for the MTA and the DOT to implement them before the day they close that tunnel so that people have an opportunity to acclimate themselves to their options and any, you know, bus lanes that were supposed to work don't work and you know we, all that stuff is in. We've also pushed very hard to get the city to review all of the lanes they're counting on for any potential uh, digging that's going to need to go on for whether it's utilities or other agencies to make sure that that stuff is done before we're depending on those lanes to move traffic smoothly. Um, it's an ongoing fight and uh, we're continuing to work on it. Uh, we're also working on, uh, there's, an, there's an issue with the M22 bus, which we're, trying, we're pushing for additional service on. Um, I think uh, it's warm. And I will stop there. I'm happy to take questions if you want. Any questions from board members? Board members? Okay, that must have been extraordinarily thorough for all of you, but anyway, th <laughs> thank you so much. I will uh, see you again soon. Take care. <clears throat> Just so that we're clear, um, we normally ask for, thank you, thank you, Senator Kavanaugh. Um, we normally uh, take board member questions only because it's not an open session. Okay, but you can ask off record. Okay. Um, Council Member Margaret Chen and Council Member Carlina Rivera. Now, who are these people? Um, I know her. Hi. Hi. Now, who are you? Okay. 
Hi, everybody. I am Vincent Fang, uh, representing Councilmember Margaret Chin. I have some sad, but also a little bit of exciting news to share. And my last week with Councilmember Margaret Chin. In August, I will be starting my first day at CUNY Law School. Thank you. Like I said, sad but exciting. Um, so working for the council member and serving this community, a community that my parents grew up, uh, worked in, a community that I practically grew up in is a privilege of a lifetime. Um, I want to thank all of you here for that opportunity. And with that, I leave you in the very capable hands of Marion Guerra. Yes, that's right. Um, who many of you will know already um, to give an update on some of the things that we've done. Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Marion Guetta. I am currently Councilmember Chin's Communications Director, but I will be taking over for Vincent with regards to budget and legislation, so it's ex very exciting to meet you. It's been quite a busy week. A, Vincent's leaving, and B, as uh, the Assembly Member in the Borough President's Office first mentioned, um, we are still continuing the fight to stop the proposed luxury mega development uh, being proposed for the Two Bridges LSRD. Um, and pushing for a full public review process through Euler. So just a few more details on that. Late last week, uh, City Planning dropped the referral and review of three proposals for t Bridge area, as well as a draft environmental impact statement totaling over 700 pages, right as the community board enters summer session, giving it roughly 17 working days to review that document and make its full comment. Um, in response, Council Member Chin led a letter alongside the borough president to CPC Chair Marissa Lago requesting uh, more time to review the applications, um, as well as reasserting our push to uh, subject these towers through ULERP. Um, we thank everybody who came out to our emergency rally yesterday morning. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces. L later uh, yesterday afternoon, CPC, in its public review session, uh, announced the delay of the hearing on the EIS, granting the community board a little bit more time. But still, this may be good news. Council Member Chin does reaffirm her commitment to continue this process, push forward her text amendment that she filed alongside the borough president that would push these towers stop the clock and provide more time for the community uh, to come up with real community-based planning to secure permanent protections for this waterfront neighborhood. Um, uh, my second update is in regards to 85 Bowery. It has been more than five months since 25 families at 85 Bowery had to evacuate their homes due to structural, um, structural problems going on in their home um, in regards to a staircase. Um, so it's been five months since then. Council Member Chin, from the very beginning, has been pushing the city to expedite uh, the repair process. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, amidst reports that the landlord is walking back on his commitment to provide a clear deadline for repairs and completion, Council Member Chin led a letter to Deputy Mayor Laura Anglin, uh, she's the Deputy Mayor for Operations, which oversees DOB, to provide a clear and firm deadline for the completion of these repairs, as well as expedite any remaining repairs uh, that uh, are barring these families from returning to their homes. Um, other news, city budget, we passed a an early and progressive city budget. I'm sure my colleague will share a little bit more news on that. One of the biggest wins um, is securing fair fares, funding for fair fares, which would provide discounted Metro cards for roughly 800,000 families, people across the city, um, who are on or under the federal poverty line. Um, one community event that I want to share with you folks. We have a new date for a bike helmet fitting. Unfortunately, we had to postpone it last minute due to uh, uh, the weather forecast last Saturday. It ended up being really great, but we wanted to make sure that folks uh, were safe and sound and had enough time uh, to get their bike helmets fitted and, and get it um, before heading out. So we have a new date for that. It's July 8th, this uh, next coming Sunday, the Sunday after this Sunday, 12 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. at SDR in the pit. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. But thank you so much. I look forward to working with you. Uh, Question? Okay, I, I just have one comment for Vincent. You've been absolutely the best, and I'm waiting for really important things from you. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Vincent, we've seen him grow. Everyone in this room that's been a board member over the years, we saw when Vincent first stood here and presented and how he has grown and flourished. Blossoms very nicely. <laughs> in this room conveys this. I wish you so much luck and much success in your new journey and your next chapter in life. And when you finish, come back here and tell us about what you learned in law school. Yeah. Uh, Naomi Schiller, the, I think it was Schiller, um, the, website testers are ready for you. So if you can go out there. Please participate. This helps us all in so many ways. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy Unger. I am Councilwoman Carlina Rivera's Legislative and Communications Director. I'm just filling in this week for Sheila Rodriguez, who is thankfully on vacation, getting some well-deserved R&R. Um, just a couple of updates to run through, jumping off of what Marion spoke about on the budget. Uh, a lot of key wins uh, for the community, specifically uh, $150 million that will be distributed over three years for capital investments to increase school accessibility, uh, $200 million for heating upgrades and NYCHA developments, and obviously in this, in this community board we're very happy to see the, that funding. Um, $12 million has been funded to expand the NYPD's body camera program to every patrol officer by the end of this year, and numerous uh, funding for uh, local initiatives and local programs that we're really proud of. Um, in other news, uh, on the Tech Hub on 14th Street, Car Councilwoman Rivera has continued to meet with members of the mayor's administration and the developers of the proposed Tech Hub this month in order to secure commitments for zoning and landmark protections that will ensure the affordability and character of the neighborhood. Councilwoman Rivera has been in touch with neighborhood advocates and organizers throughout this negotiation, and she really appreciates the calls and the letters and the emails that we have gotten about this issue. We know how important it is to the community, and at this critical juncture right now, the Councilwoman is asking for all community members to send their emails, to direct their calls and their, uh, their letters to the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs and urge the Mayor's Office to agree to fair protections for the neighborhood on affordability and character. Um, on the L train shutdown, which you've heard quite a bit about today, uh, Councilwoman Rivera is very excited to hear about the settlement reached to, uh, for the elevators at 6th Avenue and 14th Street. As part of that settlement, there will also be a feasibility study for elevators at 3rd Avenue, and Councilwoman Rivera will be working hard over the next years uh, during the shutdown to ensure that that uh, ADX, ADA accessibility is completed. Um, Councilwoman Rivera is also excited to see recently that the uh, Department of Transportation has announced some of the details about the 14th Street busway and the bike lanes on 13th Street and the New changes are that there will be one lane bikeways on 13th Street and 12th Street now, and there will be a busway that operates from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., which is in line with recommendations. Um, and finally, uh, some of you may have been there today. Uh, the councilwoman and her colleagues on the Housing and Buildings Committee uh, heard testimony from the public on intro 981 which is a bill that will be regulating short-term rental companies such as Airbnb and VRBO. Uh, specifically, the bill will be requiring these services to provide uh, vital data to the Mayor's Office of Special Enforcement, which conducts investigations into illegal uses of uh, short-term rental services. I know in this community, we have obviously heard a lot about uh, landlords taking rent stabilized buildings and converting them into illegal hotels and the councilwoman was very excited to see all the testimony uh, today from advocates and residents and we'll now be going into a process to work on the bill hear more recommendations and we hope to have the bill voted out of committee and voted on in the council 
Later this year, the bill has 40 other co-sponsors in the, in the council, which is more than enough for a mayoral proof, uh, majority. So we're really excited to see that get passed and really get some protections for affordability in the neighborhood. So. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you so much. Roll call. Here we go. Oh. <clears throat> Your own Altman? Yes. Jesse Beck? We have the backup. Sorry. Proper protocol. Motion to to the minutes. Oh. To approve the minutes in a roll call vote. Thank you. Dominic Berg? Yes. Lee Berman? Yes. Victoria Berrios? Yes. Victoria? Karen Blatt? Lisa Burris? Carlin Chan? Jonathan Chu? Yes. Mi Fung Chung? She's out there. David Crane? Yes. Jaje Daniels? Paul DiRienzo, Di Eric Diaz, Daniel Dixon, yes. Dean Johnson, yes. Yes. Alistair Konimakis, yes. Shirley Fennessy, yes. David Ford, yes. Ryan Gillum, yes. Deborah Glass, Herman Hewitt, yes. Trevor Holland, Linda Jones, Valentina Jones, yes. Marnie and Joyce, Megan Joy, yes. Lisa Kaplan, yes. Olympia Kazi, Joseph Kearns, yes. May Lee, Alicia Lewis Coleman? Yes. Luis Lopez? Yes. Michael Marino? Michael? Jeremy Markman? Yes. Antonio Martinez? Yes. Alexander Militano? Yes. Nancy Ortiz? Yes. Carolyn Radcliffe? Yes. Damaris Reyes? Richard Ropiak? Yes. Robin Chattel? Yes. Larissa Scheinberg? Yes. Clint Smeltzer? Yes. Anisha Stephen? Sandra Struther? Yes. Josephine Velez? Yes. Rodney Washington? Yes. Kathleen Webster? We will now have the nominating committee distribu distribution of ballots for tonight's election. Megan Joy. So this is um, your ballot. I'm just gonna remind everybody of who is running uh, for chairperson. There's no contested election, um, so for chairperson, it's Alicia. Uh, first vice chair is David Ford. Second vice chair is Nancy Ortiz. Secretary Clint Smeltzer. Assistant Sec Secretary Eric Diaz, who's not here tonight. And Treasurer Herman Hewitt. Um, so um, you can uh, vote or not vote. Those are your choices. And please sign the ballot at the end.
now we're going to go into the board chair's report. So you're going to see on the agenda the and during the executive committee, we had to um, we review attendance on the community board at least twice a year. Um, and attendance is a big issue when you are in this type of position because we vote on many important things that we really need all the participation we can get. I mean, I know that many people have things that come up in life. We all do. But when it comes to being committed to a position of this, it's a lot of chitter chatter. I just wanna make sure I'm clear to the new members as well as the older members that have been here for a while. Attendance is very important. When you are not present, we vote on very important things that affect our whole entire community. And we had to remove a member. So you can read it, and the vote was uh, for Marnie and Joyce. She was given an opportunity, written verbally, and she just never attended any meetings. She didn't make an effort to attend any meetings um, on the community board. We are appointed officers. This is not something that you haphazardly do, we have to submit to take this very seriously. It's like middle government at its best, right? And I do know that many of you do have different things that do come up and we, un we understand emergencies. If you look on the website of the community board, you will see what are acceptable excuses for not being present at a meeting. If you're late to a meeting and you miss the first vote, that is a part of your attendance. That goes towards an absence. Even though you're late and you're there, it's a portion, it's a piece of your attendance. I can't emphasize this enough. We shouldn't have to treat attendance like you're being scolded because we all know what our commitments are. And when the borough president appoints us and the elected officials appoint us, they take us very seriously because you've made a commitment to something. I don't like talking stern about attendance because I think that we all know what our commitments are to our community. Many of you are here because you're committed to a cause, wanting to see the better good in something so I'm asking you, please take attendance very seriously. If you're not gonna be in attendance at your committee meetings, stay in communication with the board, the, with the chair of that particular committee and be in communication with the board chair if you cannot make meetings. I, and look, the weather's getting warm. People are not gonna wanna come out, but guess what? Rain or shine, we're on our duty, just like the postman. So, that was that about attendance. We have some new members that joined us. Um, we had a new member gathering a couple of Sundays ago and five new members came out. I know there were a few that were not in the country. We understand. Um, but you're here tonight and thank you so much for those that are here. If you're a new member, please raise your hand if you are a new member of the board. That's good, while we're at it, can I, because I'm not sure of who the new members are, so can I call them? Absolutely. Um, oh, Richard is here, is he here? I'm not new. Um, so Jesse Beck, is Jesse Beck here? Jesse's not here. Okay. Um, Anton Antonio Martinez? He's not here. Okay. Um, Michael Marino? Not here. Not here. Um, Jaja Daniels? Not here. Get my point? Eric Diaz, not here. Karen Blatt, not here. Uh, Carlin Chen, Carlin's not here, right? Not here. Uh, Lisa Burris, not, not here. Not here. Lisa. Um, Paul D. Rienzo, sorry. Victoria Berrios. 
Victoria, no? Uh, Olympia's not here, right? Oh, Trevor's not here? No Trevor Holland? No, he's out of town. No Linda? Linda Jones. Um, no Marnie Ann Joyce. No Demarius. You've completed your ballot. Can you just raise your hand so we can come and collect them, please? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so back to what I was, uh, the public members and the full board. Committee applications, committee requests. Those that weren't here at the last full board meeting, we made an announcement for the committee request forms. If you are a new member and you have not filled out this form, we need you to do this right now. This is so important because we are waiting for you to choose the committees in which you want to serve on. Please pick committees that you know that you really want to be, that you're passionate about, okay? I'm going to review them and I'm gonna sit with the chairpersons of those committees and what you choose to determine whether or not that's the best placement for you. I don't want you to be on a committee that you're sitting there and you're like, why am I here, right? Um, and if you have levels of expertise and we need you on another committee, I'm going to ask you to please join that particular committee. But right now, I need you to come and fill out this form if you have not filled it out. And I know that there are missing people um, this is the reason why our public members still have not been chosen. I can't pick public members when I haven't gotten full board members to fill out this form and get an opportunity to pick where you want to go, right? So please do that ASAP. And if you are a full board member, this is an opportunity for you to switch your committee if you're not happy with your committee, okay? You can switch off. But remember, subcommittees are not full committees. So if you pick a subcommittee, you also have to have a full committee. Okay, subcommittees don't count as attendance. They are your, sec your second, what? Your second choice, okay? Sandra, you already Sandra, filled yours up. You, if you're not changing, you don't have to yeah, if you're not changing, that's fine. You can stay where you are. You don't need to, you don't need to fill it out. Right, if you're not changing, you don't need to fill it out. Only people that want to change their committees, and if you, even if you want to change and uh, add a subcommittee, that's fine also. You can add a subcommittee at this time as well, okay? All right, so that's it for me. Um, and I just want to emphasize that it's so important for us as members to, and, and even the public, go on the CB3 website. There's tons and tons of information on the website. It is so important for you to familiarize yourself with the website if you are a member of the board. We have many forms that are on that information right now about <laughs> this thousand page document that we all have to participate and read in uh, that's gonna affect us on the uh, Two Bridges area, okay? Thank you all. Okay. All right, and speaking of website, so websites, this is the last call if you wanna um, see what the new one may look like. This could end up being our community board website, so let's make sure it works well. <laughs> okay, my turn. Um, first, uh, um, I would like to, uh, for my district manager report, uh, address the budget information that you heard today about the $42,000 for community boards. It was quite shocking. Um, no one discussed this at all with any community board. So city council uh, voted for 42,000 for each board for one year. Not one penny is baseline, so not one penny can go for salaries or any ongoing expenses like contracts. Like for instance, um, if you're upgrading internet or getting a new phone system like we are, you really can't use it because this money won't be here after one year. Um, we also were not given any notice ahead of time 
Uh, we always, we're very fortunate. Our council members always give us discretionary money between the two of them, $8,000, which we wouldn't have asked for um, if we had known we were getting 42,000. Um, there was a phone call with the 59 community board district managers and some of the chairs. Um, and it was basically all questions because we didn't know what we could or could not use it for. Um, so we can use it for, you can buy paper, you can have a concert, which was actually suggested, or an event. Um, we, because of zoning going on right now, um, we will have an occasion to um, use it for expertise for both Two Bridges and for Chinatown. Um, also, the community boards, and I in particular have been asking for constituent software for community boards for pr close to 10 years, and the Manhattan boards are thinking of pooling money to have constituent software for community <laughs> boards um, developed. Uh, we're really hoping that we get a few thousand baselined uh, next year so we could use it for badly needed salaries. And I won't say any more about it. Um, for new members, I particularly, these are draft agendas. They're always put in yellow so people understand their draft. Um, they're basically mostly for uh, committee chairs to make sure any changes or anything they ask for is correct. Um, the, we must post the dates of our committees one week before um, the committee to comply with open meeting law. So the um, final agenda will be posted on the website. Meeting. That's just this month or in July because of the July 4th holiday. Um, last month after um, after this was uh, distributed as a draft agenda um, the MTA presentation was canceled so you know there are important can be important changes uh, another really important piece of information next month we will not be meeting here we will be meeting in the fully air-conditioned auditorium at Cooper Union the new building on 3rd Avenue so don't come here next month go to Cooper Union um, committees, I just want to say a few words about the district need statement. Uh, committees have been working very hard um, on the district need statement, and I know um, for some of the new and newish members, um, there were some questions about the formatting. And I think for most of us, it's intuitive, particularly because of our work, to write um, what we want as policy. The district needs is really about assessing needs and then it gets tied to budget requests and it gets tied to asking agencies to spend certain money, maybe for programs, maybe for capital money like a renovation at a park. So it goes from assessment of needs um, to what we do need and what we do need uh, translates and what we want specific agencies uh, to give us. If there's any questions, it, like I said, it, it takes years, I think, for everyone to really catch on to it, so please feel free to ask questions. Um, we're going to be hosting some uh, workshops with small business services. Um, the first one is coming up on signing a commercial lease, and it's July 11th at St. John's University. Um, SBS has asked us to sponsor some more, um, so we're looking at uh, places to do it. Please take there some of these um, leaflets up here and outside if you, and I'll be happy to give more to anyone. If you can give them to any of your small businesses, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, another announcement is community advisory board meeting for project renewal on East, the Third Street Men's Shelter will be coming up August 16th for anyone that lives around there and is interested. We actually haven't been hearing much from people, uh, from residents, about non-compliance from inner city buses, but the precincts are writing very heavy summonses. Um, they go 500 and they're up to 500 and over. 
Um, there has been at least one bus confiscated. Um, when a bus is confiscated, the owner literally comes down with a bag of money and pays. We've seen pictures of this. Um, and then once they pay, they're immediately totally in the clear and can use their designated bus stop and get renewed. Um, I have been receiving more complaints than usual about Tompkins Square Park uh, music, particularly going late at night, particularly going um, multiple days in a row. And I um, want to make a renewed effort to work with parks about that. So if you're one of those people complaining, please let me know because there's great strength in numbers. Um, Washington Square Park has uh, parks officers with decibel meters. We have none. Um, so, so it helps to have uh, numbers. And that's basically it if there's no questions. Nope. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Okay, now we're going to move into committee reports. Executive committee, that was me. Personnel committee. So we heard, uh, there are two items that we, that we heard and voted on for the personnel committee. Um, the, the first item is the, um, a dis the current, well, no longer the current, but there was um, an assistant district manager that had resigned. So um, we, well, the office flyered um, for, to, to fill that vacancy. And so there was, it was posted on the community board site, on different planning school sites, um, and also um, I think it was posted on, oh, it was posted on the city's website as well. So the, the committee um, or the task force people that had been um, pre-screened by, by the district manager and we selected one candidate, we identified one top candidate and voted to give the district manager the discretion should that top candidate decline to uh, you know, make the offer to the, to the second candidate. Um, but the uh, third candidate did not make the cut. So, um, so the vote is, you know, for the district manager to to make the offer to the to the top candidate. Um, the other item that, that we discussed was a um, one and a half percent um, pay increase, or thirteen hundred dollars, for the district manager, and she has not received a discretionary raise since May of 2016. Uh, and before that, the first raise since she started in her position in 2004 was for $1,500 in 2012. So those are dis discretionary um, increases. And with this increase, it actually, um, at one point, the district manager, so Manhattan district managers on average make less than all the other borough averages. Um, so, within Manhattan, this uh, increase would bring our district manager um, basically in the, the middle of the pack for Manhattan district managers, um, but which is still, you know, below the managers. So, uh, that, that was it. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Megan? All right, everybody wins. <laughs> um, you win. Yeah, you win. Uh, do, do I have to call out the amount of votes for everybody? Um, okay, so uh, Alicia, 36 out of 36 votes. Clint, 36 out of 36 votes. David Ford, 36 out of 36 votes. Herman Hewitt, 36 out of 36 votes. Nancy, Nancy Ortiz, 36 <laughs> out of 36 votes. Eric Diaz, 35 out of 36 votes. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank everybody. You. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you, everyone. Thank Patty. you. <laughs>
Health, Seniors, and Human Services. This committee last month, we had Mount Sinai Beth Israel Hospital to come to our committee meeting to, uh, I guess, discuss our resolution uh, from that was the uh, community feedback from the forum that we had in March. Uh, so uh, the we had three representatives from Mount Sinai Beth Israel there: um, Jeremy Bowl, I think he's the president of Mount Sinai, and Bra Brad Beckstrom and Brad Korn, who are the government relations and external affairs officers at uh, Mount Sinai Beth Israel were there. So we talked about all these different services that, um, you know, the problem that we've had is that, you know, we hear about services being moved or changed after the fact, or we hear things and they're not quite true uh, because, you know, the person who reported maybe misunderstood something. Sometimes there is an issue where the doctor has these different practices uptown and downtown and tell them to go uptown, but they have a choice of going to different places. So um, uh, the other thing is that we uh, heard that in 2019 uh, there will be a new facility at 104 Delancey Street. Uh, it's a similar to what they have in Stuyvesant Town, you know, with a lot of different services there. Uh, so in terms of the other problem that I had just mentioned about how do we hear about, you know, the different changes, how do we hear the truth and not just hear about it after the fact, so we decided upon a protocol. The protocol would be that they would, uh, uh, during the, their certificate of need stage, they would send us a copy of the certificate of need. They would send it to the office. But they would also uh, call the office or call someone to you know, confirm that we received it. So we receive an email and a phone call. Because uh, often, as you know, when you know, the office receives many, many emails, and something like a document can get easily lost. So we will task force, but they haven't met, and we may not be able to rely on them to get the most up-to-date information. And that's the end of my report. Any questions? Thank you, May. SLA and DCA, Alex. Semicolon and and Like a, a, you know, scale 
this model? It's small, but it's going to be, if you look at it, everything is, the, it, the facade is closed, has, you know, it has relatively early hours, and it's his location, you know, so it has at least that, uh, yeah, it's a long, it's a long, narrow venue. Any other questions? Uh, transportation. Go ahead. Um, I can't remember if we asked for that particular application. Um, but, they, you know, they... Go ahead, Herman. No, I just said we didn't. We didn't. You know, we, I think we felt overall it was a relatively uh, mild application. You know, they presented a menu, they presented what their facility was going to look like um, and how it's going to be operated. We were opposed to the hours. Um, we appreciated the fact that it's going to be a family-run business, but somebody who's been in the community a long time. Thank you. So we have not yet met this month, but there's a big meeting this Thursday, Henry Street Settlement. A lot of people are probably going to be interested in this meeting, okay? This is the long way to DOT presentation addressing the grand... Clinton congestion, gridlock, I should say. Uh, last year in April, we asked DOT to re-examine the street network and propose solutions to reduce the congestion on Grand and Clinton streets and the surrounding streets caused by the Williamsburg Bridge gridlock. So drum roll, okay. Thursday night, DOT is gonna present what they've described as feasible solutions to alleviate traffic congestion at this location. I'm just quoting them, I, I totally believe them. I haven't seen it, but um, we are going to be considering them this month, and then next month we will vote on something. So this will be, you know, we get to hear, we get to talk, we get to listen to the community talk, big meeting. Uh, so we've got a large venue. You should be there. Thursday, June 28th, 6.30 p.m., 301 Henry Street, which is there at the corner of Montgomery Street. It's in the Youth Services Gymnasium of the Henry Street Center. Any questions, comments? Let everyone understand. If you live in that area, it would be so great for you to attend that meeting. And if you have some expertise in transportation, it also would be great for you to attend that meeting. So everyone understands where the meeting is located, right, and the time? Say again. Say again. Where? Thank you. No, no. Parks had no votes this month, and Trevor's not here. Landmarks is not, well, oh, you gonna give the report? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Land Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Landmarks passed a resolution with reservations about the building on the corner of 7th Street and 2nd Avenue. The sh plans that we were shown was a gray building that had wraparound windows on the corner of 2nd Avenue and 7th Street. It's six stories. It has a penthouse. We passed it, uh, a certificate of appropriateness with reservations and asked that the color, um, LPC had suggested the color be changed from gray to buff. The committee felt that the buildings, the context of the buildings on 2nd Avenue for the most part are red brick. And we asked that they consider changing that to do something about the windows because the windows are all single pane and then all the corner windows, when you come up 2nd Avenue, it looks like a solid glass plate and stuff. So we asked about it because it's totally out of context with the rest of the buildings. 
The other thing that was an issue was the plaque on the building to commemorate the lives of the people who were lost and injured at that site. The landlord has some objections to that, and a suggestion was made that it either uh, possibly consider like a lamppost, but that it be a bronze plaque uh, denoting the incident that had happened and the loss of life. So at any rate, that was the resolution that we passed. And do you see it in here? If you have any questions, Robin. Robin. Uh, frankly, the landlord, uh, the, the new owner of the building, um, made a comment to uh, the father of one of the deceased victims that and I think that this person has brick that had been right they had proposed so at any rate um, the resolution was passed with an you know that we would prefer to have a red colored brick that would blend in with the rest as to whether or not LPC will take that as an issue with the landlord I don't know so they're supposed to come back to us at a later date okay David I, I think it's M-O-I-S-E. As far as I know of, it's M-O-I-S-E. Would you know our? Hmm? Yeah, his, okay. Street naming was not an issue at the hearing. Yeah, okay. yeah Rosie did that. Yeah, yeah, it's not going anywhere. It's a street. Yeah, you can't take it out. No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Land use. Hi everyone. So um, we uh, we had one vote. Um, it was to um, support city planning's proposed M1 district hotel text amendment. This is a citywide proposal that would require all hotels being proposed in M1 districts, manufacturing districts, to go through um, a special permit um, process and undergo city review. Um, it seemed like something we, sh we would generally support, although I have to admit, like we had to vote the same day they gave us the presentation and we didn't really have a lot of time to deeply consider it, but um, it, on its face, it seems like something um, that is generally in line with um, p positions that we've previously taken. Um, so that was the vote. Uh, for the, if anyone knows anything, um, uh, in addition to what we might have discussed about the hotel tax amendment, I'd like to hear it before we take our final, final vote tonight. Um, but in bigger news, um, or other news, um, the uh, developers proposed um, towers on the waterfront, um, the draft EIS um, and the minor modification application was released on Monday. There was a big rally protesting the fact that they uh, released it um, initially with just a 60-day review, which happens to coincide right at the beginning of our August recess. So in actuality, we would have only had 17 days to review an 800-page technical document. Um, so uh, after the, va the rally, the city agreed to extend the timeline. Um, and in July, uh, at land use instead, we will be meeting to discuss what our next steps will be in terms of the community board. Um, there are a lot of other ways people can get involved and neighborhood initiatives and electeds are all approaching 
uh, this issue. That's some of the things that we'll talk about at the July land use meeting as well. Yes. So we had, they, they did extend the timeline after um, the community and community board three and um, Margaret Chin's office and Gail Brewer's office held a rally this Monday. So that, that addresses the timeline issue. The city addresses that. Well, right, and community board three wrote a letter as well. We wrote a very strong letter. Right. Uh, Robin and then Val. The deadline for comments is October 15th. That yeah, we're gonna get ours in by the 15th. Right. And for the hearing will be the 17th in October. Right, and then there'll be a hearing, the city is gonna hold a hearing October 17th. That's one of the things that we'll talk about in July is when Community Board 3 is gonna hold our hearing. Um, it's possible, that it's probable that that hearing would be in September. So um, because we have many other items on the agenda in July and um, it will only have been a couple of weeks, I think what we're gonna use July for is really to strategize how we're gonna move forward and how we're gonna be able to best taken community input in, in the most optimized way. Probably. Yeah, we'll talk about we'll talk about it among the committee in July, but that's how I'm seeing like the most likely um, path forward is. So I ask because there's a couple of groups that have like talked to me and their whole issue is community engagement. Absolutely. Never at a well, public hearing and never at a committee. I've Only we've never limited that. we've, we've never limited, limited the number of speakers at a, a committee. Hearing. Right. What? We've what? never limited the number of speakers yeah. at a committee. Yeah. Not at, at a, a committee hearing. at a committee or a hearing. Yeah, that's not true. That's we told you. Point of order. That means it's too much back and forth. So on. so at at the July. So Val, I'm trying to answer you. At the July committee meeting. We're going to discuss as a committee how we're going to move forward and take community feedback. So I can't answer that right now without having the discussion at committee. So our intention is to our intention is to make the public as involved as possible. And then city planning will also have their public hearing as well. Right. But we haven't scheduled our hearing yet. I mean, but we are planning to hold a hearing. I think that would make sense. Robin? For your July meeting, will the public be allowed to voice their opinions about how they would like this public session to take place? At land use committee meetings, we always provide a time for public speakers, but the July meeting is not going to be the hearing. We don't have time. I, I, People can come if they want, but we're going to hear six or seven different agenda items, and we're not going to, we're not going to have, and depending on how many people show up and want to speak about it, the July meeting might be limited in terms of public speakers. Okay, economic development. Um, we didn't take any votes. Does anybody have any questions? Anyone have questions for economic development? Okay, thank you. Um, bylaws, 
hot off the press. on the website in two forms, the clean edition and the uh, track change edition. Um, the proposal, just to be very brief, um, is largely a cleanup of the old uh, bylaws. It's not a major change. The only real significant um, uh, difference is that we're proposing to change the uh, timing of the nomination, uh, or the, the establishment of the nominating committee, the nominations, and the vote for the officers of the board. Uh, and instead of starting in the spring, we're talking about doing it in the fall with the final vote at the November meeting. And that would be the effect if we accept these changes. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the practical effect would be Think of all the fun you had tonight voting for the officers. You'll get another chance to do that in November. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, I should report that during the past month where we were asked if anybody had any questions or comments, they should get in touch. I got, received two emails. They were not substantive changes recommended. They were questions and, and comments uh, generally. So um, I'm hopeful that we can approve this, what I think is generally a, you know, clean up of, of some awkward stuff and, and an improvement in the timing so that new members are acquainted with who's who when the vote happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you very much. It, it really went very well and quickly. I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Is that a pull vote? Okay, we can do that as a separate vote. Okay, no problem. Um, uh, where's Dominic? Oh, anything? Nothing. Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency, Nancy? No meeting. No meeting. Okay. Old business? Let's go. Uh, okay. New business? Oh, okay. Now we're going to vote. Sorry. <coughs> separate vote for bylaws. We're going to have a separate vote for bylaws. So this vote, first vote is going to be a roll call vote. Motion. On the bylaws. We need a motion. <laughs> we need a motion. Motion to have Okay. Oh, you don't? Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. On the bylaws, David Adams. Yes, separate vote on the bylaws, and then we're going to do a motion for everything else. Yes. Yes? Your own Altman? Yes. Jesse Beck? Dominic Burr? Yes. Lee Berman? Yes. Victoria Berrios? Karen Black? Lisa Burr? Carla Chan? Jonathan Chu? Yes. Lee Bong Chung? Yes. David Crane? Yes. Dredge Daniel? Paul D. Renzo? Eric Diaz? Daniel Dixon? Yes. Dean Young? Yes. Alistair Conacher? Yes. Shirley Stennessy? Yes. David Ford? Yes. Ryan Dillon? Yes. Deborah Glass? Yes. Herman Ewing? Yes. Trevor Holland? Lynn Jones? Valentina Jones, yes. Marty and Joyce, Megan Joy, yes. Lisa Kaplan, yes. Olympia Cosby, Minnie Lee, yes. Joseph Kern, yes. Alicia Lewis Coleman, yes. Louis Lopez, yes. Michael Marino, yes. 
Jeremy Martin, Antonio Martinez, Alexander Norton, yes. Nancy Ortiz, yes. Carolyn Rathbun, yes. Damaris Reyes, Richard Ropiak, yes. Robin Chattel. Larissa Scheimer, Clint Smelser again, Anisha Stephen, Sandra Strother, Josephine Velez, Rodney Washington, Kathy Rose. Everything else. So, okay. one more time. David Adams. One time, yes. Jerome Altman. Yes. Jesse Beck. Dominic Burr. Dominic. Yes. Lee Berman. Yes, except no one has to lay items. Lisa Kaplan? Yes. Olivia Cosby? Joseph Kern? Yes. May Lee? Yes. Alicia Lowe Coleman? Uh, yes, one item to seven. Item number two, SLA? No. Item number three? No. And item number nine? No. Joseph Lopez?
business. May I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, who was that? Richard and Herman. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Wonderful. Have a wonderful, cool evening, everyone. Record. Congratulations.